a comment yesterday, 1st of May 2018, by Koto Secretary General Francis Atoli has stirred up quite a serious political storm. Mze Atoli is always very controversial, okay? And yesterday he said quite a lot of controversial things. So let's be specific. He said the constitution should be changed to accommodate Uhuru Kenyatta. Yeah, so that uh, when 2022, which is around the corner, comes along, uh, Uhuru will be able to stay on. Atoli said Uhuru is very young. He should not retire. And therefore, if people want him to retire, if people allow Uhuru to retire, atasumbua wale atachukua uongozi, he'll give problems to those who will take over leadership. Now, there are a few very interesting things about the reaction this comment received, yeah, which many may have missed. As at the time I was making this recording, Moses Kuri had not said anything, okay? Major Central Kenya leaders had not said anything. Indeed, their silence was deafening. Now, there's something else many Kenyans don't know. This is not a new story. This is what people have been talking about, yeah, the people who matter in Kenya, for quite some time now. Maybe it is best I illustrate it in the words of one of my critics, yeah, my very good friend, but he really likes criticizing me. And indeed, I enjoy his criticism. Why do I enjoy it? Because I know it's not personal. Because sometimes I know he has got his own point, yeah, but I also know he has been overtaken by... <laughs> Let me not say that because it's going to listen to this recording. Anyway, this is what the man said. Wewe Chris ni kuambia mambo za mani. Lakini unaenda tu kwa hiyo channel yako, kizungu yako mingi, wawambi watu kitu. Ni kuambia hii kitu wakubwa wamekua kiongea. Alafu juzi ukaeka shallow shallow recording ati CG Uhuru to take over in 2022 as Prime Minister. Very shallow. Chris, kama uchungi, hii channel yako itaanguka. <laughs> Loosely translated, he was saying, Chris, I've been telling you these things. Those who own Kenya have been discussing this thing for a long time. And then you went the other day, you did a very shallow recording about how Uhuru would be appointed prime minister, and you didn't hit the nail on the head. Chris, I keep telling you, eh? if you're not careful, this channel of yours, <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Now, uh, I really appreciate this gentleman's comments, yeah, but uh, I'm never alarmed by them, okay? Why? Because I learned a lesson about political analysis a long time ago. And the lesson is this. If you want to be a successful analyst, don't operate, don't play to the gallery, yeah? Don't do your analysis to please the highest number of people possible. Never do your analysis so that the highest number of people possible agree with you. Never ever. But the very, very telling comment we can pick from what this man told me is the following. Wakubwa mekua keongei maneno. In other words, those people who own Kenya have been seriously discussing this issue. What? Now we'll dig deeper into that shortly after the upcoming commercial break. Yeah, if you go away, <laughs> you will really miss a lot. So don't even think about it. There come a time when the nation is more important than an individual. It is because of that consideration and in consultation that I say I shall not offer myself for any, as a guy for any position.
welcome back now before we go any further let's try and analyze the political undertones yeah and let's start with the question what is causing all this story about Huru not going uh, retiring after 2022 yeah what is the main motive behind this statement that keeps on cropping up over and over again now David Morade you all know David Morade made a very interesting comment not too long ago and he said the following I don't know where Kenyans expect Uru Kenyatta to go in 2022 because he'll only be 60 and the other people who are 75 years old who are trying to be president end of quote of course uh, Bwana David Murade emphasized that this is his personal opinion however we also know that a lot of personal opinions of David Morade have ended up being policy in recent times. That is a fact. David Morade is one of the most powerful advisors to the President of the Republic of Kenya. And because of that alone, every time Morade opens his mouth to speak, I pay very close attention to what he's saying. Yeah, and his body language as well. And where he's coming from. I totally analyze everything Bonamarade says, yeah, and for obvious reasons. Now, the whole issue here is that uh, the House of Mumbi has a problem. Now, sometime in 2016, I believe in the inner circle of the very powerful, the most powerful within the House of Mumbi, somebody said that this problem is sorted, or rather, the problem was sorted, but the problem was not sorted. Now, what problem am I talking about? I'm talking about the problem of Huru Kenyatta not having a clear hair as far as the House of Mumbi is concerned. Somebody to succeed him as far as the House of Mumbi is concerned. Now, on paper, the plan that was on paper was seen very clearly during the Jubilee nominations. Okay? Every, everything had been very carefully sorted out. So that the person who was going to win the Jubilee nomination for Nairobi was a man called Peter Kenneth. And it was very clear had Peter Kenneth won the Nairobi Jubilee nomination uh, for governor, he'd have been governor of Nairobi now. Because it was not even a matter of popularity. It was a matter of pop, 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 if you know what I mean. And so the plan was that Peter Kenneth serves as Nairobi governor okay makes quite a huge impact and then in 2022 takes over from Huru Kenyatta not as president but as the leading uh, politician from central Kenya central Kenya voters were going to speak with one voice uh, through Peter Kenneth and what that meant is that Bona Peter Kenneth would have been without doubt William Ruto's running mate or the running mate of whoever wanted to be president. That was the plan. And then of course Sonko said no. Yeah, and he marshaled all his supporters. He marshaled his uh, huge voter base in Nairobi. And uh, suddenly Jubilee saw that they had a problem. Keen Jubilee analysts saw another problem. If Sonko by any chance uh, joined the other side, that is NASA, then what would have happened is that uh, Jubilee would have seen their support in Nairobi virtually wiped out overnight. Now you'll remember that the Jubilee nom nominations were supposed to have been done digitally. Yeah, people purchased some certain cards, people were very busy purchasing those cards. And what was going to happen is that uh, those people, only people with those electronic cards were going to be allowed to vote in the nominations. And the purchase of those electronic cards in Nairobi had already been completed so that there was no way Sonko was going to win uh, any Jubilee nomination in Nairobi. And huge sums of money had been spent in, on this exercise. But then, suddenly it had to be abandoned. Yeah. Now, coming back to our main point, yeah, without uh, digressing too much, okay, the problem of the House of Mumbi was not solved. Indeed, to date, the problem of the House of, Mum of Mumbi is not solved. Now, why is it a huge problem? Now, apparently, 
President Uhuru Kenyatta is not the only person who needs an exit strategy. It now appears that even uh, his uh, watu wa mkono <laughs> need an exit strategy. Watu wa mkono are the people surrounding the president, the foot soldiers, you know, all the people who are uh, at his beck and call politically, all his strong backers, all those people needed uh, uh, an exit strategy. And this is what the nightmare is, yeah, necessitating an exit strategy, okay? They did not want a new president to take over in 2022, and then under a lot of public pressure, somebody starts investigating the NYS scandal, or the SGR uh, purchasing, yeah, and a lot of other manenos. And so, very powerful people within Central Province cannot allow anything to go forward unless and until this problem has been fixed. Now, the huge problem is that uh, there's nobody in the horizon. Okay, Peter Kenneth uh, did not win the Nairobi governorship. Yeah, and indeed there's nobody else to step into those shoes. Now, this one is extremely alarming to the House of Mumbai. Very alarming. And then, out of nowhere, a possible solution has emerged. The possible solution is that a vast majority of Kenyans want a referendum. They want to change the way the country is governed. Change the constitution, create a premiership, and create a presidency. And then make sure that uh, somebody from the House of Mumbi occupies one of those two key positions. And as far as the House of Mumbi are concerned, they are even comfortably occupying a ceremonial position. As long as they are close to the center of power, yeah, that is very important. And so this is a perfect solution for the House of Mumbi for their problem. Because uh, when you change the constitution, you start afresh. Yeah? Especially when you change uh, the executive, the, the, the nature of the executive. And so, uh, the idea is to keep Uru Kenyatta somewhere there. And this is what Atoli was saying yesterday. That the constitution needs to be changed to accommodate President Uhuru Kenyatta in a certain post. Whoever will take over the real power, whoever will take over the presidency, whoever will take over whatever, Uhuru Kenyatta remains around. That's the bottom line. Now the truth is, Uhuru Kenyatta is feeling very tired. I mean, the presidency of the Republic of Kenya is not a joke. And if it was up to him, he'd be very happy to retire, to relax, to go back to being an ordinary Kenyan and uh, generally just to recover his uh, strength and his character. After a very, very grueling time, the hardest times of his life, being president of Kenya. However, those around him are telling him it will not work. Yeah? Those around him are telling him that uh, if he's not careful, then when he leaves, after he leaves the presidency, is not going to be given any peace. And now you understand a little deeper where all this Maneno came from. Now obviously the DP Ruto camp are livid. Yeah? Indeed, uh, the DP Ruto camp has been very, very loud in its protests after Tully's comments. Aiden Dwelle's uh, response, a big no. Yeah? Makomen, you know uh, Ruto's uh, right-hand man, yeah? The Senator Markoman says a big no. That tells you clearly that the entire Rift Valley yeah, will vote no against the very idea of holding any referendum. Let alone the idea of taking through a referendum that will water down the current executive. It will be a big no from the Rift Valley. Now this one is developing into a very hard nut to crack. Yeah? Because you have DP Root on one side with his ambitions and the ambitions of those in the Rift Valley. And then you have uh, the House of Mumbi on one side, very, very determined to have a viable and watertight exit strategy from power. Not only for the president, but for many of those who surround him. And suddenly, you have a, politic, uh, a political supremacy battle of colossal magnitude.
Bwana Ruto wants to take over as a powerful president, but the House of Mumbi has a problem, and Ruto taking over will not solve their problem. And then you have Raila Odinga, who is on Huru's side, but he has a very long list agenda that he must sort out, yeah, to be able to retain his support base. That list includes electoral reforms, yeah, electoral justice, and making fundamental changes to the way the country is governed, amongst uh, others. What? Well, the long and short of it is that things are elephant. <laughs> if I can use that expression, I used to hear many years ago, when you want to express how thick, how serious, uh, how tense the situation is. You just say things are elephant. Well, there's no denying that indeed right now politically in Kenya, things are extremely, extremely elephant. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.